comes to spectrum. Greetings to the representative of the academia, industries, from different multinational organizations and trade guilds. Dear participants to this 11th edition of the International Conference on Spectrum, be welcome and many thanks for your participation. This edition of our Congress is focused in the role of enabling of competitiveness that this radio electric spectrum exerts for different productive sectors. And in this way, contribute to our uh, purpose in this national energy spectrum, that is to manage radio electric spectrum with an innovative focus and social inclusion to contribute to the development of telecommunications and improve the quality of life of Colombians. We have developed for all of you an agenda that will continue include international trends identified from our side, allowing the participants to get to know the most relevant information in respect to spectrum, the most updated information available today and as from consultation from expert national and international along with a detailed analysis of the pertinence of these topics for Colombia we have scheduled the agenda that will be developed today we will start with a conference by the ITU in which we will see what we can do for spectrum at different levels of regulation with this information, we will go to an interesting panel to debate about spectrum to for verticals and trends of new schemes for a nation. Over this particular topic, we will have another panel with the participation of regulars coming from different parts of the world, so they can tell us about their experience and lessons learned, along with the versions of the representatives from the industry. Added to that, we will be speaking of the satellite industry and the important development that this industry has experienced in the last 10 years with more options and making it possible that it has a service and more robust and accessible for all. There, we will focus on known geostationary systems and we will have the view of the most representative industries in this field worldwide. Okay. Later on, we will be discussing the trends that are being now massive in the industry, like the open ramp. We'll be discussing with an excellent panel of experts about the implications that these have over tele wireless telecommunications and over the deployment of infrastructure. On the other hand, we will see what are the targets made in the American Union for the preparation of WCR that will take place in. 2023 by the chairman of CITEL, group responsible for the preparation of this World Telecommunications Conference. Likewise, we'll be hearing about the strategies developed from by different organizations, companies, countries to reduce the digital divide, improving rural connectivity, and we'll be seeing how spectrum is a fundamental element for this purpose. On the other hand, we will receive information about the experience monitoring on part of the European regulator. And we will see what are their strategies implemented before the deployment of new wireless technologies. On a complementary basis, we'll get to know research projects developed by the National Agency for Spectrum along with the National Academy in respect for signals for radio, for 5G and its effects over human health. Finally, we will be talking about a fundamental role of spectrum within the framework of the digital transformation in Colombia. And for this segment, we will have the participation of persons and views of national and international organizations to complement the work in our agency in respect to the identification of needs by productive sectors. Just to say that as in previous editions in the building of the International Congress for Spectrum and the building of the agenda and the invitation of the speakers that we will be having today, we always had in mind the declaration of the World Telecommunications Conference in 2019 about equality and parity of gender when it comes to the radio telecommunications sector. So many thanks to all of you and I wish you success today. Welcome. Muchas
gracias, director. Agradecemos. So many thanks, director. We thank your words. And now we invite Oscar León, secretary, secretary of the Interamerican of CITEL, of OES. Oscar León is an electronic engineer with a postgraduate degree in telecommunications project management and master's in business administration. He has over 18 years of experience in ICT sector. He has a broad experience in project direction, implementation of new businesses, and appropriation of new technologies. He was their project director and solution providers of Microsoft and work and the telecommunications regulator in Colombia. Claro regulations manager, advisors of three ICT minister, director general of the National Agency of Spectrum in Colombia for almost five years. And he was elected secretary, secretary of the Inter-American Commission Telecommunications since this September 2015. Member of the appointed by ITU for the Americas as vice president of five group. Um, environmental changes, the studies of interaction of radioelectric fields and human health. Welcome. Good morning all. Dear Carmen Elija Valderrama, Minister for ICT in Colombia, Miguel Felipe Anzola, Director of National Agency for Spectrum, Anne, Mario Magnews, Director of the Radio Telecommunications Office of uh, ITU, dear colleagues and friends. First of all, I wish to thank National Agents for Spectrum for inviting me uh, in representation of the Inter-American uh, Commission for Telecommunications, CITEL, to uh, open this uh, 11 uh, International Congress of Spectrum. And definitely, we have started differently in respect to the preparation also of the next WTC that has been affected uh, all of us by the pandemics of COVID-19. However, that has given us the opportunity to, to improve the working procedures in order to strengthen leadership of the CTEL across the region and also uh, international meetings such as the preparation for the WTC in two years. So in that sense, we have carried out four virtual meetings successfully. Moving forward on topics uh, that are quite complex and but managing to reach agreements. We had the first uh, regional telecommunications meeting that met virtually to analyze topics in respect to CMR or WTC 23. And the pandemics did not stop us. We have adapted ourselves to this new reality and we are pleased to see how really telecommunications in general have helped the oil um, to uh, go through this pandemics and also to, this recovery and I'm happy to announce that 12 to 18 November last we celebrated the 30th uh, communications of uh, PPC2. Uh, during these meetings we gave a continuation to the regional cooperation on issues related to planning, coordination, harmonization and efficient use of spectrum especially for the implementation of new agreements that we had uh, agreed in the previous conference that were part of the radio communications uh, uh, guide. Remember that among the mandates of uh, communications, we find the one of promoting the harmonization uh, between the 34 member states of the OAS to continue improving the continue considering the also to consider the the possible effects of 5g in human health de redes y servicios de radiocomunicaciones con un uso más eficiente de espectro. Y, y es en este sentido que dentro de los temas principales que se discutieron, la... The main topics being discussed in that week, um, PCC2, was the update of the bands prioritized by different countries for MIT services. 
there is a recommendation projects about intelligent transportation system that continue. Uh, they're still being discussed as well as the six gigahertz ban for non-licensed use. Likewise, there is a debate about a recommendation project for the licensing of the use of the land station movement uh, to follow satellite and also is being under analyzed. And you will see in the webpage of CTEL, the final report of the meeting that um, we'll be producing a couple of weeks. Considering that the topic of this Congress is the spectrum as a neighbor for development competitiveness, I consider it important to highlight that it's clear that digital connectivity have made a good progress in the last two years to provide access and uh, for the infrastructure also of broadband. I don't have the figures in top of my mind, but the most recent ones are that between June 2019 and June 2020, web pages that have been linked to E-Trade have been increased by 400% and all digital forms of trade have seen an increase of 1500% in the last 10 years. And notwithstanding that, there's still big challenges given the disparity that exists. So we have only 45% of the population out of this digital world, and not 50% of them live in with no connectivity at all. And that is how that from the point of view of the OAS and the for CTEL to close the digital divide is a key issue uh, for most governments across the region. For instance, to, to reduce uh, aspects on child abuse, for instance, among other topics. That it was also a topic during the International Day of the Children. So we need to see how we can uh, close the gap that the pandemics provoked, especially in children that were attending school and lessons through internet. We need to work with the private sector and all countries in Latin America and all parties interested to exchange experiences to promote inclusive connectivity in the region. And best practices were developed to reduce the digital divide and the result of this work in the past 12th November within the framework of the 59th General Assembly of OAS, the chancellors of 34 countries of the Americas approved uh, inter-American resolution with uh, 21 initiatives to expand uh, ICT telecommunications in rural areas that currently do not have the service. So I invite you to consult this initiative in the webpage of CTEL and both OAS. And finally, I wish you the back to sex during this uh, three days of discussion uh, to discuss uh, key technologies, especially 5G future, as well, it could be the basis to uh, prepare the basis for the six uh, gigahertz band. Thank you. Thanks for participation, Dr. Leon. Now we have Mario Manueves, Director of the Direct Telecommunication Sector of ITU. Mario Manueves has been or lives in Uruguay, graduate of electronic engineer, engineering of the University of Republic of Cruz, specialized in telecommunication. Prior to his singing to ITU, he performed positions, technical and management positions in the first telecommunications operator of Uruguay until, and work as professor, associate professor in the faculty of the University of the Republic. ITU for over 30 years, he has been a member where he has been regionales de la UIT. Regionals of ITU. As director, Mr. Manueves is responsible for the management of radio communications office that organize and coordinates the overall work of the telecommunications sector to see that there's a rational use, equitative and efficient use of the radio frequency spectrum and satellite orbits. Madam ICT Minister of Colombia, Dr. Carmen Bardera Marrojas, Director General of ANE, Miguel Felipe Anzola, Executive Secretary of CITEL, 
Oscar Leon Suarez. To all speakers and delegates, have all of you a very good morning. Gracias por su intervención, señor León. Recibimos a Mario Maniewicz, director del sector de radiocomunicaciones de la Unión Internacional de Telecomunicaciones. Mr. León, for the telecommunication in May, in Uruguay, he has graduated in electrical engineer from the University of the Republic in Uruguay. He specializes in telecommunications. And briefly, he, after he came into the ITU, he was in the technical field as well as managerial fields as the main operators of Uruguay. And tell, and then he worked as an assistant professor in the Faculty of Electrical Engineering at the University of the Republic. He works at the ITU for more than 30 years, where he has occupied several responsibility posts in communications and in matters of law. Mario, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Minister of THIC of Colombia, Ms. Calder Badrama Rojas. Director General of ANI, Mr. Felipe Anzola, and the Executive Director of Oscar Luan Suarez and CITEL. And all delegate guest speakers and, and the participant members, good morning. For me, it is a pleasure to participate this of the Congress. And we have a core, we are very thankful for the invitation. I would like to start by congratulating Annie for organizing this Congress and to give us this way the opportunity to share experiences and to speak about matters of this spectrum. Dear friends, the ITU is working to permit new technologies in radio communications and the service provision so that we can broaden connectivity given, uh, broad connectivity to all peoples and to make a reality of the digital transformation in order to achieve the connecting of the rest of the half of the, the other half of the world they have the challenge of increasing coverage especially in the suburban rural and remote areas and at the same time to reduce the cost of connectivity that is not this is not a minor challenge the benefits are evident to find global solutions to a global problem the extensive negotiations international that the ITU carries out has the spectrum harmonization regionally and worldwide, and actually this reduced the cost of the, the, the equipment and the network devices. It allows the development of good technologies without putting in danger the investments done in the existing networks. The next meeting of the ITU that will be held in 2023 will try to satisfy the growing need of the terrestrial uh, and land services and to broaden the borders of connectivity. Dear colleagues, we are next to the second year of the preparation of the World Conference of uh, uh, 2023. And as you well know, this uh, preparation process there's, that we have there of the studies that actually uh, have four weeks of research where the member states try to find solutions that answer to the needs of all countries. The national administration and the, the authorities like the A&E have played a fundamental role in this process. They, were, they are in a single unique position to transmit and to defend their national interests in the regional realm as well as in the world realm. The organizations like CTEL actually provide a support in having a global consensus so that we can have results in the world, uh, in the WCI. And that's the World Conference of Communications. And then we have all these regional as well as international are important because this finding of solutions of this commitment through the consensus is difficult. It does increase the probability that the decisions that are applied with success in the national administration for the conference, as a matter of fact, once the conference is finished, the administration do incorporate the international framework nationally, and they make sure that the spectrum that are associated will put in use so that they can control these scarce resources. When we manage the spectrum, national regulators like the a &E should designate these resources rationally, efficiently, and economically in concurrence with the 
radio communications uh, recommendations of the ITU. By doing so, the regulators have their national priorities and the needs of the different telecommunication services. The designation of these limited resources to a specific service is actually done at the expense of other services. And to find this delicate balance is a really a true challenge. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I see that you have an interested agenda for you. So this event will cover several topics associated with the spectrum, including the designation of the spectrum to the vertical industries, the mega constellation of satellites, an open network, the 5G, and the human health, rural connectivity, the role of the spectrum for the digital transformation and the progress of the region in preparation, in preparing it for the future. Excuse me for coughing. And now that we measure of uh, preparing for the World Conference of 2023, I would like to invite you to the first international meeting of such conference that will be held from the 13th to the 15th of December. And indeed, you will have more information about the challenges and the preparatory studies in the course in the ITUR, as well as the preliminary projects of opinions, positions, or common ones of regional groups for the CMR uh, the 23, the World Conference. The World Radio Conference, I would like to congratulate you and I wish for the best for this conference. Thank you very much. Buenos días nuevamente. Good morning once again. If you could please project the presentation, if you can, please. The slides. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, once again, good morning. I'm going to present the slides in English and I will speak in Spanish so I can try to, be, to balance out the participants of both uh, languages. As you well know, the presentation is called What Should We Do for the Spectrum? And the title of it, it may seem not very common and what i pretend is to transmit there and then we have very clear what the spectrum can do for us and it's undeniable that ever more the application service we would have the use of the spectrum for its running but the only way of doing a rational way and uh, that is economic level of, of these limited resource as i was saying in their opening words is that actually we uh, do something for it. In other words, that we do a, a proper management of such uh, national and international. And of this is what I wish to speak about. If we could go to the next slide, please. The management of the spectrum and the associated orbits is, is the result of the activities that are performed nationally as well as regionally and internationally. And this is a bidirectional process where the national policies and regional policies that are represented in this slide of the A&E nationally in Colombia and CITEL regionally in the Americas actually feed the, the international framework of the ITU and inversely the norms uh, actually feed the regional and uh, world uh, realms. In the next slide, if we were to look at the role of these uh, national administration in the development of the policies of the spectrum, it is important to define from the very beginning what is the most important of the a political agenda and what are the national priorities. The countries realize during COVID, the pandemic, the COVID pandemic is that the digital transformation and coverage were fundamental in created a digital economy. In certain cases, we increased the network, uh, the networks in urban areas to improve the coverage in suburban areas where the majority of peoples live. This digital inclusion is being turned clearly indispensable. In other cases, we actually provided more to the machines and the objects and the, the increase of the industries and also to link in the rural populations or enable the scientific services so that we could create a more sustainable and inclusive society. In the next slide, please. 
whatever the national policy may be, a regulation based on results is actually focused on the objectives and they consider all the solutions that may be used so that you can achieve the results. Normally, the solution doesn't include one, but rather several services and several networks. The connectivity of broadband, for example, can be provided for several services like the Cimente, the Wi-Fi, the fixed services, satellite services, non-geo, stationary services, the high altitude platform, among others. Regulating authorities, national ones, they have to balance out the spectrum aside from each one of the services that can provide connectivity of broadband as well as the amount of spectrum in order to provide all the other services provided by the public and private sector services, radio diffusion, passing through our networks and radio. If every country, country has the policies and different priorities and international level, level, all the needs must be reconciled so that we can guarantee the national, equitable, efficient and economic use of the radio frequencies by all services of radio communications. Also, <coughs> Además de atribuir el espectro, además de atribuir el espectro y aplicar la normativa internacional, la UIC también elabora estándares internacionales para todos los servicios de radiocomunicaciones con el fin de garantizar un mejor rendimiento, calidad y asequibilidad. Quality and effectiveness. The radio communications standards in it allow to have emergency communications, emergency services, aeronautical maritime, transport, other communication services. services among them. Next slide, please. Una vez que los reglamentos, una vez que los reglamentos, normas internacionales, rules se transponen a los marcos regulatorios nacionales, los reguladores nacionales aún tienen que decidir cuáles son los mejores modelos para conceder licencias para nuevos operadores. Whether it be through the concession of local licenses, regional licenses, or international licenses, or the concession of spectrum for public and private networks. The numerous focuses actually pretend to have increasing growth of the cases of the uses that the spectrum actually needs, while the localized ones of frequencies actually can go to international ones, to ports, airports, the regional licenses, and national licenses can actually have access to the population in general, while certain applications depend on services with specific ones, for example, providing a very high level of reliability in a network and privacy of the data, other applications may have requirements that are less explicit. It actually corresponds to the national authorities to define the models that best adapt themselves to the national needs in each frequency band. Next, please. As a matter of fact, after conceding the license for the use of the spectrum, the spectrum you have to take additional measures in order to guarantee the policies and the national objectives of this. I'm going to broaden the connectivity to the rural and remote areas as just one step. Next, the administration must guarantee that the services and devices are accessible. <laughs> that we can actually have some content of interest for the population that this has the knowledge and the necessary skills to actually use digital services and exploit them. Next. Lastly, in the era of post-COVID pandemic, we should not forget two additional considerations for managing the spectrum. The impact on the environment and the resistance the of the robustness of the communication networks. <laughs> I'd like to excuse this cough that I have. 
las nuevas tendencias tecnológicas buscan dispositivos más eficientes desde el punto de vista energético y dado que el mundo se enfrenta a un mayor riesgo de catástrofes naturales y pandemias globales, la solidez de las redes es cada vez más importante para garantizar que los servicios puedan funcionar incluso en casos de emergencias o crisis. Siguiente slide. Como pueden ver, una adecuada gestión de los recursos del espectro es el medio para garantizar la amplia difusión de los servicios de telecomunicaciones y el uso de estos servicios para el desarrollo económico y social de todos los países. I am very grateful for your attention, attention and I do y apologize for all this annoying <laughs> cough. Thank bueno, you bien. very much. Muchas gracias, director Manier Wicks. Les recordamos participar a través de las redes sociales con la etiqueta décimo primero Congreso Espectro y seguirnos en Twitter e Instagram. Aparecemos como arroba Ane Rayal Piso Colombia, en Facebook como Ane.Colombia y recuerden que pueden seguir esta transmisión a través de la página web de la entidad www.ane.gov.co o en la página web del Congreso www.internationalspectrumcongress.gov.co. A continuación, recibimos a Miguel Felipe Anzola, director general de la Agencia Nacional del Espectro, quien presentará la segunda conferencia magistral titulada Política de Espectro, Nuevo Modelo de Espectro y Plan Maestro. Bienvenido, director. Muchas gracias de nuevo. Bueno, nuevamente, un saludo, un saludo para, para todos. Bienvenidos. bienvenidos. En esta, en esta conferencia, conferencia en eh, esta guest lecture, yo quiero I would like to de manera tell muy general, in a very general manner, eh, qué hemos hecho what have en we este done periodo de gobierno, in this qué estamos haciendo actualmente por el espectro, for the spectrum, en la contribución que tiene el espectro that it has, para el crecimiento económico y social de nuestro país, on the Colombia. Of Pero the también quiero mostrarles Colombia, para dónde vamos, I would like to show you cuál es la hoja de ruta eh, que tenemos para los próximos años y un anuncio que voy a dar algo muy importante para ayudar muchísimo en la conectividad en zonas remotas, zonas alejadas, zonas donde no hay ningún tipo de solución disponible. Pues bien, eh, hace tres años nos imaginábamos eh, cómo podría ser ese, ese futuro, o sea, los años que estamos viviendo actualmente. En otras palabras, los nos imaginábamos And el espectro como eje para la transformación digital. Todos digital sabemos que el espectro es un, un, un recurso esencial, esencial, esencial en el sentido de que si no lo tenemos, no podemos lograr los resultados que buscamos. The results Por ello, we eh, so, el espectro es eje en la transformación digital. Se buscaba que seeking, en ese entonces time, aumentar la disponibilidad de espectro para uso libre y también para las IMT, para las IMTs, telecomunicaciones móviles internacionales, internacional que utilizan eh, los operadores Are used móviles, mobile los proveedores de redes y servicios de telecomunicaciones the móviles, network providers sí, y que, pues, and that son con los que llegamos más rápidamente a la población. Pero por otro lado, eh, se hand, trataba de we, um, mejorar la conectividad, la conectividad en aquellas zonas del país donde eh, todavía nos falta eh, y, y estamos trabajando en ello. Pero se genera, se buscaba tener un, un modelo, un modelo eh, con incentivos. Aquí se estaba buscando disminuir contraposiciones eh, para los enlaces de microondas, para los, aquellos enlaces Links for que conectan las estaciones base de los operadores móviles en zonas nuevas, zonas donde no había ningún tipo de conectividad en el país. Y por otro lado, pues, necesariamente la de definir nuevas bandas o bandas para nuevos actores en este negocio. Ahora bien, ¿qué hemos hecho? So what have we done? Eh, en primer lugar, Firstly, eh, trabajamos we have arduamente. Hard. Durante el año pasado, trabajamos una propuesta year, de política de espectro. 
una propuesta policy. que ya más adelante les vamos a dar el detalle, further, una propuesta show you the detail, para un periodo de cinco años, for a una propuesta que trabajamos conjuntamente con todos los sectores, con la industria, a través de un proceso transparente, un proceso de participación de toda la ciudadanía, de todos los interesados, con discusiones públicas, que finalmente logramos nosotros tenerla eh, con todos los resultados para eh, diciembre del año pasado, que fue adoptada por, por eh, la cabeza del sector, la señora ministra de Tecnología de la Información y las Comunicaciones. En segundo lugar, desarrollamos nosotros la identificación de nuevas frecuencias, nuevas bandas de frecuencia para las telecomunicaciones the, móviles internacionales. Internacional Elaboramos el año pasado un documento que publicamos uh, the, eh, en ese entonces y, eh, then, y nuevamente como para agosto logramos August, eh, sacarlo a la luz pública para contarle well, we a todo el mundo to, uh, ¿Qué bandas de frecuencia son las que se, se tienen identificadas para eh, IMT para los próximos años? Adicionalmente, eh, conscientes de la necesidad de tener un uso eficiente de espectro eh, y, y, y habida la había cuenta de la discusión que hay entre diferentes the sectores, the eh, diferentes sectores eh, de las radiocomunicaciones por el uso de espectro, pues definitivamente... That sort es necesario of adelantar estudios de convivencia, estudios de, en el que diferentes servicios pueden compartir una misma banda de frecuencias. They, they, ¿Qué pasa? Que es necesario que esas bandas de frecuencias eh, sean utilizadas, pero hay que garantizar la calidad de los servicios. ¿Eso qué significa? Que la convivencia debe ser tal que no se generen interferencias entre diferentes tipos de servicios. Es así como nosotros adelantamos esos estudios de convivencia en las bandas de 600 MHz, que hoy en día... Eh, son utilizadas para is, uh, los servicios de radiodifusión por televisión for, y también está identificada para INT. La banda de 900, la banda de 2.6 GHz, la banda de 3.5 GHz, disponible en este momento para 5G, la banda de 26 GHz también, que corresponde de banda milimétrica también para 5G. De otro lado, un tema muy importante, hicimos una modernización del plan maestro, el plan técnico nacional de radiodifusión sonora en FM. Hacía 25 años que no hacíamos esta labor. Hoy en día contamos con herramientas tecnológicas que, que tienen, que cuentan con eh, herramientas computarizadas para la simulación de la propagación de los campos electromagnéticos y que le permite a todos los interesados, a toda la industria en general, adelantar simulaciones para determinar la cobertura adecuada para eh, los servicios, es decir, poder determinar hasta dónde se propagan las señales y que permitan una buena calidad de servicio. De esa manera, logramos nosotros entonces optimizar el uso del espectro, garantizando calidad de servicio en la prestación del servicio de radiodifusión sonora. Pero adicionalmente, este, este plan nos ha permitido poder identificar eh, nuevas frecuencias para los servicios de radiodifusión sonora. Tenemos... Eh, eh, canales más cercanos, pero que de todas maneras se garantiza eh, la calidad del servicio. Ese plan no solamente es en lo técnico, sino también en lo normativo. Se expidieron las resoluciones correspondientes en las cuales ajustamos entonces los procedimientos normativos y administrativos para este, este plan. Es trabajo que lo pudimos sacar adelante después de 25 años de, de funcionamiento en el, en el plan anterior. Adicionalmente, Trabajamos pues, en buscar eh, mayor disponibilidad de espectro para uso libre. ¿Qué significa eso? Que en la medida en que hay eh, muchos interesados en uso de ciertas bandas de frecuencia para eh, bastantes servicios, pues es deber nuestro poder asignar o determinar el uso de ese espectro para aquellos servicios que más benefician a la sociedad. Entonces, eh, logramos identificar varias bandas de frecuencia para prestación de servicio, en particular, eh, un servicio muy atractivo, muy interesante para beneficio de la sociedad, sobre todo en aquella época de pandemia, donde todos estábamos realmente encerrados, donde necesitábamos también algún esquema que permitiera distracción de las personas. Que se estableció eh, el uso de espectro en la banda de FM para que se habilitó para la transmisión de eventos públicos, particularmente los autocinemas. 
otros cinemas. Entonces, en varios sitios, en varias But ciudades del país, se realizaron cinemas en los cuales las movies, personas podían ver las películas directamente desde el carro. Y car, el sonido llegaba directamente a través de la radio. radio. De otro lado, Teniendo en cuenta Another, que la uh, industria en general tiene unas necesidades importantes de aplicaciones radio, particulares, uh, eh, fue necesario también realizar el estudio en varias bandas de frecuencia para la prestación de, de servicios específicos, por ejemplo. Eh, los que necesitan los prestadores de servicios públicos domiciliarios, eh, digamos, el caso de consumo de energía, que necesitan, eh, Frecuencias, frecuencias para, para la medición uh, eh, de, del consumo de energía de manera inteligente. Of, uh, Entonces adelantamos los estudios correspondientes para viabilizar ese espectro para so uso eh, en redes privadas, en, en aplicaciones uh, específicas. Ahora bien, de otra parte tenemos nosotros trabajos que adelantamos en la definición de parámetros de evaluación para contraprestaciones, para facilitar el... el, el que los interesados so en este, este tipo de espectro puedan tener unas condiciones más asequibles por el espectro. Entonces, espectro. en ello, pues, so eh, that, lo trabajamos para eh, los enlaces de microondas, para la radiodifusión sonora y también espectro para pruebas, for dentro de cuáles está también eh, pruebas para 5G. Test for 5G. De otro lado, eh, elaboramos also, una propuesta de modernización del régimen satelital. The en Colombia, el régimen Colombia, satelital está satellite establecido is actually una regulación del Ministerio de la Función 106 de 2013. Of 2013. Eh, si bien existe esa regulación, existe una serie de inquietudes, de preocupaciones de la industria, y por eso adelantamos nosotros esa propuesta de modernización, que entre otras, como ya ha sido mencionado, eh, es necesario también regularizar eh, la ubicación, la, el registro de la ubicación de estaciones satelitales para el servicio fijo, fijo, fijo por Entonces, ese es un tema que, que ya lo adelantamos y que próximamente pues, saldrá a la luz al sector. De otro lado, eh, continuando con el tema de valoración de espectro para eh, contraprestaciones, eh, se trabajó también para eh, servicios de cubrimiento. ¿sí? Cuando hablo de cubrimiento hablo del servicio, por ejemplo, punto, punto, multipunto, ¿sí? Of ejemplo, point, point. Eh, los sistemas de radiocomunicaciones que utilizan eh, las compañías de, de vigilancia, the, eh, la policía, the, todos aquellos que utilizan esos handys, esos radios portátiles o, o vehiculares eh, en la industria en general. Y también para el servicio satelital. Ahí hay un avance bien importante. Adicionalmente, also, eh, pensando también... Thinking, eh, en estos temas en que Mario Manuel nos habló uh, eh, de manera muy importante, es, es, es fundamental, es fundamental en nuestros nuestro países trabajar uh, for, en for la conectividad, en, in en la inclusión social, social, en la sostenibilidad. In Entonces, en ese orden de ideas también adoptamos una propuesta para gestión de espectro aplicable en el caso de redes comunitarias y telecomunicaciones rurales comunitarias. Y de otro lado, y no menos importante, se ha aplicado, digamos, en el sentido de, de continuar con la inclusión, con, continuar con la conectividad. También trabajamos en temas asociados a el servicio de acceso a Internet en zonas rurales, en zonas alejadas, donde por motivos de, ejemplo, el negocio de los operadores móviles no les da para llegar a esas zonas remotas. To go sí. to those Entonces, eh, uh, aquí está la posibilidad de uso Here de espectro no licenciado en las bandas de televisión, pero que nos va a permitir dar la conectividad en aquellas zonas a un costo muy bajo, eh, pero que nos permite definitivamente esa, facilitar esa inclusión social. ¿Para dónde vamos con esto? ¿Qué estamos Where haciendo? Bueno, bueno, tengamos well, en cuenta que uh, in eh, in that, uh, en los dos últimos años, years, eh, la situación del COVID, la pandemia, pues pandemic, nos limitó de alguna manera y nos cambió la forma de hacer las cosas. Nos ha cambiado el mundo de alguna manera, pero que el mundo sigue existiendo, tenemos que continuar funcionando. Y muchas formas de hacer las cosas se dieron. Cambiaron las formas de hacer las cosas y tenemos que seguir avanzando. Entre otras, pues hay que garantizar la seguridad alimentaria. Pues bien, eh, 
hemos visto que en general el mundo eh, sigue compitiendo en lo económico, en los diferentes sectores productivos y buena parte de eso se está logrando a través de eh, mejorar la infraestructura productiva, la infraestructura de los sectores productivos y buena parte de esos de, de, de esa infraestructura productiva hoy en día hace uso de radiocomunicaciones, de sistemas de comunicaciones inalámbricas. Es por ello que So, las mejores formas de materializar, de mejorar la productividad, pues se realiza a través de, de, los, de los sectores productivos. Son ellos quienes que realmente se encargan de hacer esa implementación y eso lo logran hoy en día a través de, de transformación eh, basada en tecnología. Pero bien, como les decía, esa nueva tecnología hace uso de comunicaciones inalámbricas. Y en ello, de nuevo, aparece... We have, el again, espectro radioeléctrico como el elemento fundamental. Si no tenemos el espectro network, if we don't have the spectrum, it's not going to be possible to do these type of things, and that's why we consider that the spectrum is an essential one. It's an enabling factor for that productive transformation of the economy. But on the other hand, let's see the following situation for decades now. The communications, the mobile communications have progressed a lot and they focus mainly on people. Give you an example, the mobile communications, we were speaking of this the first, second, third, fourth generation mainly, they actually are focusing on, on connecting people with broader bands every more. They use the more and better internet services with communications that are not only voice communication, but data communications and video communication. Here we're seeing the implementation of fifth generation, which is an array of uh, broadband communication, an array of options, uh, digital communications as a way of how we focus the aces of electromagnetic waves to where the users are, which is beam foaming. And then we have, uh, Technology being uh, the, the uh, universities that are actually um, 5G. And that enables them to have the service that are far more used. The fifth generation doesn't come only to connect people, it actually is. And then they're actually there to connect the industries, their new applications. We can say that half of the market of the communications is going to be an industry. So these new generations of technologies of radio communications are going to generate a total transformation in the economic sectors of society. I must say also, And this is something that is very important. And this is a challenge for everybody, specifically for the network providers and services, the operators. Here we're going to have a situation that I deem that is actually very similar to what we have in the 90s when we implemented the data networks. The ones they have there. And then we have the ones there to design them. And this uh, for the uh, ones that are there. And then here we're going to have there with mobile communication. Uh, then we have there, and then we have for the ones that you need for agriculture, you don't need it for logistics, and you don't need the same services for transport, you don't need it for distribution, and you don't need it for manufacturing. They're all different. So for these ones, it's actually to be able to design this type of specific solutions that are required to the different sectors of industry that today, the, the news today is that technology would enable you to do that. So it's a matter of having the parameters of configuring uh, or making the solutions uh, custom made. Well, once you have understand all of this focus of all the economic as well as the technological one, we saw the need to develop a spectrum policy for the years to come the very near years to come. And that's what we're doing in the best practices. If you actually um, query the OECD, the IDB, and the ones, everyone's focus is to materialize social well-being. 
law in 1978 of uh, 2021 to modernize the TIC, actually focused there on improving and leveraging the, the people's well-being, not necessarily the communication, but through the communications. So that's how we manage the spectrum with a market focus with digital transformation. So why? Fine. Our goal with this policy was is to modernize the, the, the spectrum and then we have the radio electric spectrum to transform digitally the economy. And for that, we actually have the ones there. And then we have there, uh, we are very imperative. And then we have there, focus there, of at least a five-year horizon. That is that we needed more spectrum for the different services. And then we have there with the direct operators and they compete because the spectrum is there available. And then uh, we have it, okay. It's actually to, to do there. And then we have there a, a long-term view. And then we have there, there we have there uh, a work that, how to do it there. And then from the tick management, yes. And then above all, to be able to guarantee there that it's available at the time when we need it and then we have the different ones and we have there uh there so uh once we formulate the policy we come in there to actually have a new model of a spectrum management and then we have there the assignation the designation there uh, on to generate the administrative and then we have there uh, to be able to guarantee the continuity. It's actually, it is to work there uh, and the control on there. So actually we review those models and then uh, we have there, and then to be able to uh, do that to the max and those sort of work that we need to do and all these things. So we need actually to find, to do them in a more longer time so that we can respond to the industry quicker so fine in order to materialize policy and then we have there on this this topic is uh, then we have there in the applications and the different services in a very specific manner it materializes the, the spectrum policy enforcement and we're doing it on a five-year horizon and this model of spectrum we publish it the public is the, the four months ago we did it for all industry and we broadcast it the, the opportunity to show uh, to, to file comments file challenges proposals and the like we had it up until the 22nd of um november right so we received many many documents that we are processing but we estimate that this master plan we actually can have it totally debugged in the next few months. And before we finish this year, or at the latest by the next year, the idea is actually to just publish this master plan of the spectrum, spectrum management. How do we work it here? Here we consider, and we have international inputs and national inputs. We took international, once we took it from many regulators, of manufacturers, industry, standardizing mechanisms, industrial groups, business groups and business sectors and there's a nationally we worked since we are actually thinking in um, in the spectrum policy it's actually to help for the growth and the development of the digital transformation of our national economy. So it was fundamental to be able to work with productive sectors and that is how we did many working tables. We worked with 10 different productive sectors. Here you can see in the screen there, they are the sectors that they contributed the most for the GDP of our country. And the ones that contribute the most to generate employment in our country. And the ones that contribute to the economic reactivation after the pandemic of the, of the COVID pandemic. And so there we met with different ministries with representatives of different industries, with the one with uh, business sector representative, manufacturers, integrators, a whole array of 
key players so that they were able to facilitate their proposals, their concerns in matters of radioelectric spectrum, in matters of development, modernization of their technologies and how from the spectrum we can actually help them. One of the most advanced areas is the power generation grid because in Colombia we have a great tendency right now to generate electric power as of systems, modern systems that are more kind with the environment. On the other hand, in this master plan of spectrum management, we work 24 different subjects. This is a very uh, if, uh, aggressive ones. And then we have there uh, oh, one, yeah, yeah. And uh, then we have there, we have uh, you know, 24 working fronts, but how we're going to do it, we're going to do so in times during these uh, five years so that we can actually process, obviously, in a participative manner, in a transparent manner, with the working tables, with the different business sectors, so that we can manage to achieve, maximize the use of the spectrum to actually be able to see what are the schemes to you know, allow us to determine and to value that economic uh, aspect of there, and also to identify and to make available the spectrum that is necessary to actually service that for future growth. The projection that we have for here we have another projection of, for what is very high because there is a broad demand for spectrum in this case so with this projection we are going to uh, get up to 2029 with over 23,000 megahertz of spectrum right now we have available about 400 megahertz in the 3.5 gigahertz span and we are going to have within the next few years new contributions the millimetric bands will be available 100 percent by 2027 however you may think that it can be used before of course with some exceptions where the spectrum is licensed but those are exceptions of a very special locations maybe in the course of next year will be a good effort to identify a new spectrum there's a high demand on part of the industry we have had a series of forums meetings or working groups where we have identified this need but for the time being we want to show you what is our forecast or projection finally and before ending my presentation, I want to talk about the announcement I made. Technology that we are seeing in many parts of the world, that is the use of white spaces for the TV to promote connectivity in rural areas, in remote areas where no type of technological solution can arrive. So the idea is to install transmitters that have a reach of up to 15 kilometers, more or less, and that in the TV bands. In that map that you see there, we see that um, uh, those areas that have different colors and uh, other than blue, we see the amount of channels that are available. In Colombia, we have about 45 uh, uh, frequency channels for TV, but in practice, only 15 of them are being used. That is, we have about two thirds of them without being used for TV. But today, in many countries, this um, the TV channels are being used, uh, especially for TV um, on. Uh, connectivity for uh, to access uh, internet in rural areas, in remote areas, where there is no type of other type of possibility. So what is the big news here? Uh, nowadays, several pilots are going on in the country, but in practice, we have implemented a database that will allow, that's working today, will allow to identify automatically what is the best frequency or the best frequencies for each municipality across the country so that we can use those frequencies to enable uh, the possibility of access internet and that is a free use that spectrum that is non-licensed it's not necessary to have an authorization of such but it is necessary to coordinate with an uh, 
well, what are uh, the use of those frequencies that can be done to the automatic by the database of its spaces so the transmitter equipment just connects to the database and let's say every 24 hours it, this um, information is updated so what benefits can we derive from this uh, with this solution? Well, actually, it is a solution that has a low, have low consumption of energy because maybe less power, excellent penetration because the um, uh, let's say goes up to 15 kilometers, lower cost, as I said before, and there is an ecosystem that is available by different providers. And the idea is whoever need is want to implement that they can do it right now. There's been used in schools located in rural areas and other productive areas. The anti-regulation about this topic is found in the resolution 05, um, 05 of the 2020. And the idea is to have more connectivity. We can facilitate the, let's say, the country has more access to ICTs, generally speaking. And in this way, uh, our ultimate intention is to contribute to the development of communications and improve the quality of life of Colombia. So that's all on my part. Thank you very much for your attention.